Welcome to Westminster Shorter Catechism. Today we're mainly focusing on question 48, which has to do with the meaning of the first commandment. But we're going to look at question 45 to get started. Question 45, which is the first commandment? Answer, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Question 48, what are we especially taught by these words before me? In the first commandment answer these words before me in the first commandment especially teach us that god who seeth all things taketh notice of and is much displeased with the sin of having any other god all right what does this mean we're on our third and final section of the first commandment now most of the commandments and the questions about the commandments say, what's the commandment? What does it require? What does it forbid? Okay, next commandment. Uh, but in this case, there is something else in the commandment that requires further explanation. And it is these two words, before me, before me. So, uh, God could simply have said, think about this. He could simply have said, thou shalt have no other gods. Next. Uh, that would be a sensible thing to say. It would have a clear meaning, but that is not where he ends. He actually says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So what does that mean? Well, before could mean a lot of things. It could mean in front of, right? So uh, before me in line, right? Uh, in other words, you can have other gods, but just not before me. They have to be after me. I'm first. It could mean earlier than me, right? Like, they predate me in some way. Like, if you've ever worshipped other gods, you can't worship me. Could mean that. But that is not what this means, and our question answers that clearly, or our catechism answers that clearly. Um, so, we're going to talk about what the Hebrew Bible says, and then we're going to talk about how the catechism clarifies it. In the Hebrew Bible, the words before me in Exodus 20, verse 4, are the words al panai so i've got him right here al panai literally it's upon my face upon my face uh, another use comes from genesis 1 verse 2 the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters so it over is al the face of is panai uh, it says panai in our passage because it's my face, but over the face of something. Um, this is the same thing in this commandment. In other words, the waters have a face, right? They have a surface, and the Spirit is hovering right above it. So when we ask, what are we especially taught by these words before me in the first commandment? The answer is, these words before me in the first commandment teach us that God who seeth all things, right? It's all before his face. He taketh notice of and is much displeased with the sin of having any other God. In other words, God is watching especially to see how we worship. He notices, it's his top priority in fact, uh, that, that his creatures give the proper worship to him, which is why it's the first commandment. Now, why would God care so much where we give our worship? A lot of people have asked this. They've thought, well, maybe God is like a jealous boyfriend, or maybe he doesn't like to share. Maybe he's just a curmudgeon. All of those ways of thinking, though, underestimate the value of God and who he is. So think about it like this. What if your dad had another wife and children, and he liked to spend some weeks with your family and some weeks with this other family? Would that be a good thing? Would your mom be happy about that? Would she say, oh, I can share? Or would you be happy about that? No, you would hate it. You would feel betrayed, and so would your mom, and you would feel right you would feel correctly that your dad was doing something very evil and it was an act of betrayal. There are certain things that we shouldn't share 
they are wrong to share them. Other things are right to share, like money or time, uh, love, joy, things like that. But when it comes to sharing worship or sharing certain loyalties, it is wrong to give our worship and our glory to anyone other than the one true God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No one else deserves it. No one else is worthy of it. And to give it to another is a great sin against the one who does deserve it. It's bad for us too, by the way. No other object of worship can satisfy us as God can. And all the other objects of worship can only hurt us in our relationship with God, who is the only source of our life and joy. So yes, God does care uh, where we give our worship. And he wants to make sure we know that he cares and that he has very good reason for caring. So that's what this question is about. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would always help us to love you for who you are and that we would glorify you more and more in all situations of life. Help us to know that you see us, that you care, that you see and accept our good worship and you're displeased when we worship other things. And Lord, may we learn to glorify you and enjoy you forever. Amen.